Hey y'all, it's Editing Kimberly here, and this is going to be my long-awaited portfolio video. What you're looking at right now are pictures of the finished project, but I needed to come on first and let you know that the video ended up being a lot longer than I wanted it to be or expected it to be. So I had to separate it into either three or four videos. I don't know yet how long it's going to be, but right now I'm going to upload part one to be available on Sunday. Part two will be on Monday, and if there are only three parts, then I'm going to put upload part three Monday evening. If there are four parts, then there will be up, uh, part four uploaded on Tuesday morning. Uh, so let's just get on with the video and also give an explanation of why it has taken so long for me to get this video out when I promised it last Wednesday. Anyway, on to the video. See you later, guys. Hey y'all, it's Kimberly. In this video, we are finally going to do the long-awaited, promised uh, homemade portfolio. This is one side of it that I've already completed prior to doing the video, so th this video is not too long. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the other side. It's just like this, and then how to put it together. And there are going to be some parts of it that I'm going to either do off camera, or I'm going to speed up so that it doesn't uh, take forever and that I can have this be not too long of a video. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to give a little explanation. I know I promised this video to be out last week on Wednesday, uh, but on Monday evening, I believe it was, we lost our internet. I called AT&T and it was, well, I lost connection with them in the middle of making an appointment. It was supposed to be for Tuesday. When I got back in touch with them, I had to go through everything all over again, running all the tests and everything, even though I told them I'd already been through it. And by the time we were done, it was going to be Friday before someone could come out. I was so mad. But anyway, to make a long story short, I finally got in touch with corporate, and they sent someone out one day earlier. And we got the internet back on. Uh, turns out that someone had unplugged us. They came out to do a repair somewhere else, and they unplugged our service and left it unplugged. Um, but anyway, we got a credit for this week for being without, in fact, got bigger than the amount of time that we were out, because we were only out for five, four days, and they gave us a almost a half a month's credit. But that's probably because I got really mad at them and told them I was moving my services from them, all of them that I could, uh, which I've already done part of which is moving my cell phone service. And I am actually recording this video on a brand new cell phone. And hold on just a minute while my cat swamps out. Okay, sorry about that. He just had come in. And as soon as I start the video, he starts wanting out. And he'll probably turn around and come back in in just a few minutes. Um, or start scratching on the door to get back in in a few minutes. And I'm trying to keep the door closed. That way people in the living room can watch TV and not be bothered by me. And I won't be hearing their TV on this video and getting demonetized. But anyway, what I was saying was um, we did get our internet back Thursday. But then my dad's, neither one of his computers would hook up to the internet. Not the uh, desktop or the laptop. And I spent the entire day Thursday trying to fix that. And then I spent Friday trying to find a new wireless um dongle to put on one of his computers so that he could get the internet back and trying to get it overnighted without it costing too much money. And then of course our cell phones came in and with the stress of internet going out and everything, I didn't get to film this video because I mentioned before I have an autoimmune disease and when I get stressed out and anxiety and everything, it flares up and I pretty much spend several days in bed in pain, migraines, uh, body pain, you name it, it does something different every time. But this time it was just full blown. I was just miserable. Anyway, now I'm filming this. Uh, luckily on the new phone, because I did try to film a couple of unboxings, and um, I'm gonna have to refilm one of those because my webcam started doing these crazy things when I tried showing the drill field. In fact, when I just showed the canvas, period. It was going in and out of focus and all kinds of lines and stuff going across the screen. And I didn't know what I was going to do. But when this phone came in, I was so excited because it does excellent videos. 
and it's got a ton of storage and so hope, I'm hoping this is going to be the way that I continue to film unless I do find me another camera that I really really like but for right now this is what I'm using and I don't particularly like the setup but I've got a new phone like thing that holds the phone coming in on Monday uh, but in the meantime I'm going to be filming this way and I really don't like it because it's a little bit too close to the desk and everything and I just I can't get the whole desk in without it being here I've played with it left and right but anyway I'm this explanation is taking too much time I'll talk about more about it later this is the one side that I've gotten done this is the handle that I'm going to be using uh, which is paracord that I braided I didn't do this part I went ahead and braided both handles because I am going to link the video where I learned how to do this fishtail braid so if you don't know how to do paracord um, you can go and watch that video because he can explain it a whole lot better than I can. I'm just going to show you the couple modifications that I made to it in order to turn it into handles instead of a paracord bracelet. Anyway, this is the side that I've completed. Um, and then the items that you're going to need, since I've already cut it, is going to be foam core. I got this. This is Elmer's foam core. It's the $2.00. Uh, buck 77 I believe was the actual price at my Walmart foam core they do have one that's under a dollar don't get it get this one it's a little thicker and sturdier of a foam bore the other one would bend really easily uh, so be sure to get the two dollar one or go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels and get a really big one and cut it down but this was a I gotta remember 30 20 by 30 I believe um, I was about to say what did I do with my measuring tape but it's right here it is let's make sure yes this side is 20 and then the length was 30 because I do believe I cut it at yeah 15 and 15 so you end up with a 15 by 20 uh, portfolio which is really a perfect size for carrying your little snack size um, panties around so that you can like carry them when you travel or if like me you go to the hospital and you spend several hours every month or whatever uh, this will be the perfect size for that. I'm going to set this completed side uh, to the side right now. These are the tools that you're going to need. You're going to need your foam core, of course. You are going to need a box cutter style uh, Zacto knife so that you can cut the foam core because you won't, you don't want to cut it with a craft knife because this is just not going to cut it. It's going to make really jagged cuts. So you want a box cutter style. Um, it'd probably be better to have a bigger one than this. This is just the largest size I had handy um, without having to go outside to the toolbox. This is one that I cut open all my boxes with when they come in. And um, it's nice and sharp, but I did have to cut one side of the foam core and then flip it over and cut the other side. You're going to need measuring tape to measure and get your figure out where the halfway mark is. And what I, I'll show you how I did that in a moment. You're going to need a ruler. You're going to need a pencil. This is a pen that I use, but this is an erasable pen. But you're going to need to mark your center with your pencil. You're going to need your craft knife. Uh, this is to cut your uh, duct tape with. You're going to need some Velcro dots. These came from Walmart. I think they're like $2 and something. Uh, but you get like 10 to a pack, I believe. 10 ovals, so that's like... Uh, what five things that you can um, velcro or no wait a minute you get ten ten velcros or like ten both ten of both sides so you actually end up with ten pieces and here he comes again hold on just a moment okay I am back and hopefully he's not gonna want to go out again okay you're gonna need the ruler because you're gonna be drawing a line to do the center piece and you're also going to want to run the Zacto knife across it because it's really easy to, like, it's hard to stay online on the uh, foam core. It will make you want to go, it'll like almost force you to go away from it and the ruler kind of helps you stay in line. You're going to need paracord. I got two um, lengths of, power, of paracord from Walmart. Um, it was about $3, I believe. Um, I just got the black because um, I ordered it through the grocery app and picked it up uh, so they only had certain colors available there was like rainbow and black and red and I think that was it so I just got black because I figured it would go with anything 
you're going to need a lighter and the lighter is for your paracord because when you get to the ends of places I don't know if you can tell it right there in the video the shiny part right here you melt the ends like any ends that you cut you melt them because if you don't they're going to keep fraying and so you just light up the lighter melt the end of it a little bit and then let it go in this case where you're trying to seal it off you'll light up light it up and melt it really good and then you'll take your pliers and you'll press against it to like push it down and flatten it out so that it won't come loose and go through and untie um, you can also push it down this way but pliers is a good way to do it if you don't have all the equipment for making paracord bracelets and then of course you're going to need your foam core um, when you do the bracelet, um, in the video he shows you, you're going to need to make it about twice as long as he does because if you look, that's about how long you would need for a bracelet and there's about double that for the handle. Now, you don't necessarily have to make yours that big. You can try to determine how big you want yours, but since I walk with a cane, I had to because I am extremely unsteady on my feet thanks to a lot of stuff I've been through, which I haven't told you all about. Um, I will be telling you that in a future whip and chat coming up, but you want to make it as long as you want to. Mine is this long so that I can actually put my arm through it and carry it on my arm along with my pocketbook and other stuff so that because everything I carry has to be in one hand because the other hand is dealing with a cane. And if you put stuff that swings on the hand that's dealing with a cane, you're going to swing the cane right out from under you, under you and you're going to hit the floor. In the video, he teaches you how to, you loop this inner piece and you're going to do the braid around it. He teaches you to go down to the very bottom and create this really intricate knot. In this case, you're going to skip that step in the video. So do not knot the bottom of it because you're not going to need it knotted. Um, when you get to the bottom of this, you're going to melt that and tie it off like he tells you to. But you don't need to tie the center piece that you are braiding around. So skip that part. I will try to put the timestamp where he tells about the knot. Um, put the timestamp of the area like where it starts and where it ends that you need to skip in his video. Uh, that way it will remind you not to do the bottom knot in this piece. Because you're actually going to want both ends of this open when you make the handle right here. I'm going to set this stuff aside because we're not going to need it right now. What I'm going to show you now is how basically on here I did the uh, splitting in half of the 30 inch side. I opened up my tape and I was setting it down and I was marking the center piece which in the case of right now to be 10 inches but it was 15 inches for the 30 and then I was going down all the way down it but I'm just going to mark it once in this case but I was going all the way down and marking on both sides the center part and then I'd move up a couple of inches and mark the center part again move up further center part again and then towards the end and then come back down and do the same thing this way but I started from near the middle you don't have you can start wherever you want to that's just the way my brain works to start in the middle and then you will take your ruler and, of course, connect all of the lines and make you a long line all the way down. And then you'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side if you have to cut on both sides. If you have an X-Acto knife that will cut all the way through your foam core, don't worry about that. Um, and when you cut through it, I do recommend keeping your ruler up against it and cutting as close to the, right up against the ruler as you can. Because like I said, you will have a tendency to want to go offline even though you're trying your best to follow that line. It's easier if you got something to push against with that craft knife. And like I said, this is an erasable pen. It doesn't matter because I'm covering this in tape. But as you can see, that erases. If you want to buy one of these, these are pilot friction pens. I don't know if you can see that right there, but they are pilot friction pens. You can get some that have a cap or you can get some like these that are clicker pens. I prefer the clicker pens. I don't like pens with caps, period. Anyway, we're not going to need the ruler again, for an, and we're not going to need the X-Acto uh, utility knife again right now. 
or at all, I, actually, I don't think. We're going to work on this now. We're not going to need the Velcro for right now. And we're not going to need the measuring tape yet. But we are going to need our X-Acto knife. We're going to need whatever color of duct tape you want to use. I'm covering the main body of this in this Galaxy duct tape. And then I'm going to have uh, what is essentially a closure on each side that is Velcro so that I can open it completely. And then I'm going to have a little piece that comes uh, through the middle that's kind of like a middle closure. And all of those are going to be done in purple. Just because I thought the Galaxy was going to be just a little too busy to be all Galaxy. And I thought the purple would bring out the little bit of purple in this blue tape. I don't know if it's going to look good, but it's the way I want it to look. Anyway, I'm going to show you basically what I have been doing to cover it. I'm going to set the purple and the bigger galaxy aside, which, by the way, this does not come in the 20 yard. It only comes in 10 yards. If you want printed uh, duct tape, most of them do come in 10 yards. I got these at Walmart, too. The solid colors, though, come in 20 yards. So if you do yours in solid colors, you'll be able to get a lot more for about the same price because I think there was like a 50 cent difference between the 10 yard and the 20 yard in price at my Walmart. So you get a lot more bang for your buck in the solid, but I really like this Galaxy, so I wanted it. And as you can see, I've been using the purple a lot because I actually have a large portfolio that is all in teal and purple duct tape. Anyway, get your duct tape started, and what you're essentially going to do is you're going to start on one side. You're going to go the across the 20 inch length side but pull your duct tape out further than you're going to need it and you're going to line it up as close to the bottom as you can right here with an overhang on both sides if you don't press it down too hard it'll, it'll be easy to pull back up but once you press it down pretty hard it's no longer going to be easy to pull back up. You don't have to go around the bottom right here because you are going to connect the two pieces and it's going to cover up the bottom. Then, um, since this is wider than my main cutting board, I have two cutting boards out, which this is a very cheap cutting board over here, so it does not self-heal. So I've got scratches all over it. But cut it. And then you're going to Flip it over and pull it as tight as you can and lay it down. And you're going to continue doing this all the way up, trying to space it out. Sorry if that was really loud. Trying to line it up almost perfectly, overlapping as little as possible. That way your tape goes a lot further. And I probably will get quiet while doing this because I start concentrating. And I'm one of those people that sticks my tongue out of my mouth when I'm concentrating. So I can't exactly talk when my tongue's stuck out between my teeth. So excuse me doing that part. And I do recommend to always put your lid back on the exacto knife because I have cut myself badly just picking it up off the desk before. If you can pull it around really tight, this way go ahead, otherwise flip it over so that you make sure you get it really nice and tight. And then run your hands across it. Now the rest of this, I'm going to go ahead and finish all the way up off camera. And I'll be right back to show you how I do the very end of it and wrap it around the end. Because on this part, you're going to wrap around on this end. So hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I am at the end of it. That didn't take me long at all. And I'm going to do the last couple of strips, which are going to overlap a little bit more. Because this one comes almost exactly to the end. I have to look at it really closely because I'm looking at it from above it. And you see how close it is to the end right there? A little bit of a bubble right there. Don't want that happening. Cut it. And 
wrap it around really tightly. And then for the last piece, you're going to go about halfway down the tape. So you probably want to get your fingers kind of close so you can get an idea of what halfway is. If you're not exactly on it, you're a little bit off, that's okay. It's not really going to show up when the uh, tape blends together. Cut that off. And now before you go wrapping it around, I'm going to turn it this way where you might can see this a little bit better. You're going to get right here at the end where you see it. And you're going to cut off this way. And then you're going to cut it off this way so that you're cutting that square out right there so that it looks like that and I'll show you again on the other side but in the meantime you're going to just wrap this piece on around like you have the other pieces and leave this sticking up for now turn it around and we're going to do the same thing we're going to find our corner right there and we're going to Bring it straight out and straight up and cut this corner piece out. You won't be needing it right now. You might can use it a little bit later. You're going to wrap this piece on around. Then you're going to flip it over and you're going to wrap this piece down and pull it as tightly as you can. It's probably going to wrinkle some because you are pulling the tape really tight. So that you're getting a nice flat edge across the top. And I'm sorry for the squeaky sounds, but that's what duct tape, that's duct tape sound effects for you. There we go, that didn't wrinkle too bad, just a couple little wrinkles in it. Alright, and on this side to make sure everything stays secure, I go ahead and put a piece down the sides just to make sure that these stay down pretty good and to make it look a little bit neater on the inside of the foam core and be careful when you cut right here not to cut deeply into the foam core because it's not that hard to cut the duct tape and we're going to do the same thing over here And don't do as I did, kids. I still got the exacto knife in my hand. You should not be doing that. I should not be doing that. I should be listening to myself. I'm a little bit off right there. Because that was stuck to duct tape, it was easier to pull off. If it had been stuck to foam core, it probably would have pulled up part of the foam core. So do be careful when you're lining this up. If you're a little bit off like I am right there, it's okay. You just don't want to go off the edges of your tape. You want to be sure to get the edges of your tape down nice and neat. And then I am going to take one more piece and go right across the top a little further down than where this one is. Because we're going to need this a little bit reinforced right here. Okay, I didn't get the corner. Okay, there we go. So there is how you cover this piece. Now we are going to put on the handle. And I want the handle to... Hey y'all, Editing Kimberly here again. That was the end of part one of this video series. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Be on the lookout for part two, which will be coming up tomorrow. In the meantime, if you're new here, please do subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and let me know that you liked it. Please give me some comments down below. Give me any suggestions you have for future videos you would like to see. Uh, tell your friends about me. Help me grow my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.